for the vast majority of my life, I was an extrovert. Um, I still am an extrovert. I have all those extroverted qualities. But since I was diagnosed with my mental illness, since I was broken, I've become something different. I'm still an extrovert in many ways. Uh, I still have many of the traits of an extrovert. But now I'm also introverted. And I never understood the difference between the two, uh, except in a very cursory way until it happened to me. Uh, I always thought that introversion was something that you just had to get over, that if you just did it, it'd be fine. Not understanding the struggle that a person that's an introvert goes through, um, especially in situations that an extrovert has no problem with. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, if you like us, please like, share, and subscribe, all that good gear. Um, but otherwise, let's dive in and see what happens. Welcome to Mark My Words. Mark My Words is the story of my journey from a place where I was shattered to where I could live again. Okay, so my brother is an introvert. In every sense of the word, he is shy. He has trouble in social situations. He prefers to be by himself. And I'm an extrovert in the classic sense, in that I have no problem putting myself out there. I feel better if I'm the center of attention. If I walk into a room, I want everybody to know who I am. If I have to get up and do a speech or a talk or a performance or a dance, I just do it because. That's just in my DNA. Now, my brother, who is an introvert, I never realized the struggle he went through. Because imagine this, we're army kids, we show up at a new house, a new suburb, a new city, I would go around knocking on people's doors, asking if they had kids, uh, because we wanted to play with them. That was just who I was. It was not something that was extraordinary. It wasn't something that I went out of my way to do. It was just, we're in a new place. Let's meet new people. And the thing about my little brother, he was always over my shoulder. So I always just assumed that he was completely comfortable with being, doing extroverted things like just running out of the house and trying to find new friends. Whereas to him, I didn't understand how much of a struggle that was for him. And the fact that he followed me everywhere made me assume that his introversion was, say, a lack of initiative. He wanted to do what I wanted to do, but he just didn't think of it. So it wasn't that it was painful for him or that it was very difficult for him or it would give him sleepless nights. It was just he didn't think about it. And I thought that's what introversion was. And then I got hurt. And all of a sudden, I started to understand the times when my brother said, I I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that thing. I don't want to be with those people. I just want to be with myself. Because they were all things that were alien to me. I was always better if I was with people. I'd wake up in the morning and where is everybody at? Let's go find them. What's everybody doing? If they're not doing something, let's make something happen. That's just who I was. But my brother, the introvert, for him, it was a very different story. We'd move to a new city and I would see it as an opportunity. He would see it as something dark and dangerous and potentially harmful. I would see it as an opportunity to make new friends. He would see it as having to start over again from a place of nothingness and trying to rebuild his life. Hopefully finding new friends, hopefully finding uh, a community that he could connect with. And then when it came time two years later for us to move, he would go through that fear and that sort of thing again. And I would just go, hey, just a new opportunity. Let's do it. Let's go see what's up. So when I started to feel those things, when I started to feel that fear of people, that second guessing myself, 
Whereas before I would have just said, you know, hey, I'm a person, you're a person, let's hang out together. Now it's, well, what would that person think of me? Am I a good person? I don't know that I'm a good person. It really came home to me when my brother was real young. He was in high school. A bunch of his friends came to me and said, we've got this idea for this skit. And it involved my brother being in center stage, having to do this full lip syncing performance. They came to me and said, look, Mike would be the perfect person to do it. Or maybe they even came to me and said, we don't know who would be the best person. And I just thought of my brother. And like I always did with my brother, I just basically said, we're doing this now. Come on. For me, it was just a matter of, mate, you just got to get up there and do it. I didn't understand how deep rooted his insecurities were. The fact that he didn't sleep for nights and nights and nights before this performance and for days and days afterwards. He was so nervous and so uh, racked with insecurity and in performance anxiety. And I, I had no idea. To me, it was just get up on the stage, do the cool thing, and then it's done and dusted and get over yourself, just do it. I kind of get mad at myself now. Like, I, I know that he's really proud of himself for doing that, but I kind of get mad at myself at how um, insensitive I was. I, I didn't know any better. It wasn't as if I meant to torture my brother. That was not my um, idea at all. I just saw something that I knew he was capable of and that he would look good doing it and it would be very cool. And he did it and he did look good doing it. And every it brought the house down. It, it was the, the performance of the night. My dad talks about watching that performance and he still to this day cannot believe that he actually did it because my dad was also an introvert. He understood the struggles that my brother was going through. Now I feel the same way. Yes, I come across as an extrovert. Yes, I come across as confident, but now I live with this constant insecurity. And the thing of it is that it follows me after I've done things. So I second guess how I did in certain situations. I'm constantly checking in with myself. How am I doing in this particular situation? Am I succeeding? Am I failing? What are people thinking about me? Um, and then just having this self-stigma about myself. I can't possibly do these things. Who am I to think that I could do these things? What's the point of today's episode? The point is I just need to get the message out there that there are people out there that come across like they've got it all together. Uh, a dude said to me, we go into school and do these talks. A dude said to me, he said, Mark, you are the calmest dude I've ever seen. He said, no matter what happens, you're just like, let's just do it. Canceled? Eh, doesn't matter. Late? Eh, doesn't matter. Don't have somebody? You're going to do it by yourself? Eh, doesn't matter. And I had to explain to him that that was not what was going on inside. I was like that proverbial duck, you know, underneath the water. But on top, he just looks like he's ducking it up. Sometimes we look at people and we can make assumptions, even by how they're behaving. Because I know that I come across as an extrovert when people see me. When I'm in conversation, I'm, I know how people perceive me. I also now know that I have limitations and that's the important part of this discussion. I don't see myself as, as broken or less than because I now have this dual kind of personality thing going. It's not multiple personality disorder. It's just these two very different components of my per personality. I'm an introverted extrovert. There's going to be people that you know that are in the same boat. And for me, it's just about admitting that, knowing my limitations, and also learning when to push myself. 
to say, you know, I don't want to do this activity, but I know that I'll feel better if I do do it. You know, and it's as weird stuff. It's like I go and do a talk in front of a classroom full of high school students. There's some people's idea of terror. For me, it's self-help at times. I know that if I push myself out of my comfort zones, if I'm doing this thing where I'm doing output, I'm giving out, I know that in myself I'll feel better. So if you know somebody, if you're me, if you're like me, just learn your limitations, understand those limitations, and don't let them hinder you where it's healthy for you to engage with that stuff. I now know that there are times where I just can't do certain things, certain family gatherings, certain events, certain things. I just, I can't do them because in the long run, it's going to be worse for my mental health. So introverted extroverts out there, uh, we stand united. Hey, uh, thank you for listening. Like I said at the beginning, if you like what we're doing, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, We're not doing this for money or fame or glory or anything like that. We really just want to help people. That's why my wife and I continue with this and will continue with it. Uh, I appreciate you. Have a great week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Mark My Words. I'd like to thank my producer, Meredith Brosnan, and also Torian, Kevin, and Lorraine. And I can't forget the band Adelaide, who allows us to use their song as our theme.